screen, so you should be able to see that as well. Uh, so today we are talking about Web Orb for Java, and uh, I'll be focusing on uh, an upcoming version, uh, version 4.1. So this is uh, that's why I labeled it uh, Technology Preview. So we'll talk about all the new cool things which are coming out soon uh, in in this release. Uh, the webinar is being recorded, and we'll be posting a recording of, of this webinar to our blog. Uh, shortly after uh, the webinar, we will need to encode it, slice it up, upload it to YouTube, and it takes just a little bit of time. Okay, so let's talk about Web Orb for Java. I do have, uh, a, you know, really two-slide presentation. So as far as the feature matrix of where we are today, you can see it on, on, on your screen. And uh, if you're not familiar with Web Orb and just joining us, uh, the very quick introduction uh, of what Web Orb is. It is an integration server. Uh, between Java backends and uh, really a, a wide variety of the client side technology. So it's an integration server with really just one goal uh, to integrate your client side applications to uh, with with the Java backends. And uh, as far as the client side technologies, all the major client side technologies which we support today, you can see them on this particular slide. And they include, include Flex clients, Flash, Silverlight, JavaScript, Ajax. Android, and we are working on support for iOS operating system and all the devices that that includes, including macOS as well. Now, uh, vertically, you see there are different slices. So uh, the, at, at, at the very high level, we have remoting, meaning an ability to invoke server-side uh, components from various client-side technologies. And as far as the server-side components, these could include, in the Java world, EJBs, Spring Beans, uh, Pojos, uh, Hibernate models, uh, uh, or really just anything else that, that may, may exist there. So as far as the data management, right now the support is fairly limited. It's just, just flex, and we are working very actively on expanding it to all the other client-side technologies. So messaging is an ability to exchange messages between client and the server, between client and other clients, being able to push uh, data from server-side into the client environment, integration with various MQ systems. And uh, you can see right now that the, the we are lacking support on the Silverlight site and iOS. So and then I included two cloud, uh, cloud environments which we support today. Uh, well, today as of version 4.1, we shall be previewing. And uh, uh, we are adding support for Google App Engine as well as uh, EC2. And, uh, uh, as far as Azure, you know, most of the Java folks are really not interested in that, so that's why I made it from this particular feature matrix. Okay, so let's talk about what we have in version 4.1. <clears throat> and right after that, I'll be jumping into the actual presentation to give you a feel of what the individual, uh, what the individual features entail. Uh, there is a question of whether uh, the uh, RIM playbook is supported, and RIM playbook is is definitely one of the environments that we target. So, and that will fall into uh, really ActionScript clients and native Java clients. So you're right here. I, I should have had should have had a line for native Java environments and specifically for Playbook. In fact, we have played with uh, Playbook emulator uh, and tried it out, and it works actually today with what you can download from our website if you were to use basic remoting to uh, to you know, build your application with, uh, you can communicate with Java backend. Uh, as far as the playbook, it is, uh, there is a question whether it's just Air. Uh, it's Air or native Java. We do have APIs for native Java clients, and you can, you can use those APIs to communicate from RIM playbook applications using pure Java with really any backend supported by Midnight Coders. So you can have playbook talking to .NET, Playbook talking to Java or PHP. Okay, so let's uh, uh, move on right into the actual list of features. So number one, uh, I'm going to start with like basic ones and uh, and then just to dig into something more complicated. Simplified deployment. So uh, we always strive to make it as simple and as trivial as possible to actually deploy web open to an existing application. So as of version 4.0. In the most minimalistic deployment, you had to put two JAR files, which was weborb.jar and jdom. So we're getting rid of jdom, 
and the most trivial deployment if you were to integrate web work for Java into your existing application, all you would need is um, webworp.jar. So that's, that's going to be a new thing in version 4.1. All right. Uh, we're adding support for Grails. And uh, uh, as far as the Grails, WebWorp 4.1 will include a Grails plugin, which you can just, if, if you are developing with Grails, you can just deploy into your Grails app. And that will give you pretty much all of the WebWorp functionality, so including remoting, data management, and messaging. And the messaging is the RTMP. So using WebWorp for Java, you'll be able to build all the, you know, all the functionality, all the features that RTMP implies, you'll be able to leverage them directly from your Grails application. And I will do a demo of that later today as well. All right, so we have improved, significantly improved AJAX support. And uh, that includes fantastic code generation, which will make it very easy to get, uh, get going with, uh, with an application that uses AJAX to communicate with your Java backend. And uh, the, the improved support for AJAX supports not only just the basic remoting, we also added support for JSON. So you can do JSON RPC between your client side app and Java backend powered by WebWorp. And we're also adding support for messaging that uses WebSockets. And I will demonstrate uh, the, that code generation today as well. Now, uh, as I mentioned, Google App Engine integration, so you can deploy your Java-based backend into a Google, Google App Engine. Uh, <clears throat> the way we did it uh, is um, it's fairly straightforward, something that you would expect. You integrate WebWorp into your Google App Engine app and just upload it from, from Eclipse. There is a different uh, mechanism and scheme for pricing. Uh, so uh, it's going to be cloud-based pricing, and I'll review the details later today as well. Now, as I mentioned, messaging code generation. Uh, right from the console, you will be able, starting with 4.1, to generate your ActionScript, JavaScript, and Java code. And we will be expanding this list to iOS and other clients. And that code will, be, will allow you to do publish, subscribe between those client-side environments and your messaging destinations. We also added messaging test drive, where you can directly from the console create producers and consumers for your messaging destinations and see how those messages are actually flowing through the through the destinations. Now, we're adding support for Windows Phone 7, and that uh, is kind of a natural thing because we supported Silverlight, and uh, uh, extending it out further where you can, where you can have WebWorp generating all the code and projects to, to be deployed on Windows Phone 7, and I do have a demo of that ready as well. And, uh, uh, and we should have swapped, you know, Silverlight support in Windows Phone 7, but the Silverlight support is also has been greatly improved where WebWorp for Java can generate all of the C Sharp classes and the code that will, ena that will enable you to communicate between Silverlight apps, whether they're running in the browser or whether they're running on Windows Phone 7, and uh, send messages and objects back and forth with the Java backend. So that's, that's the full list. And uh, uh, let me take a look if there are any questions. But right after this, I'm just going to jump into the actual demo. All right. Okay, so let's start with uh, Google App Engine so I can get this Eclipse out of the way as well. Uh, and uh, for this, uh, what, what you see here is, uh, is just my Eclipse with a very basic GAE project. Uh, and as a part of this project, uh, I do have some basic classes. Some of them were generated by the Google, Google App Engine template. I have also deployed web in here, and the process of deployment is very, very straightforward. So you can, uh, let me just open the Navigator view. Show view Navigator, because it's a lot easier to see it that way. And whenever you deploy WebWorp into uh, a GE application, you do have this WORF file. So in here, you just put all your, all your JAR files, and then your Web and Flex folder, and you put your WebWorp configuration file, and so on. And, uh, and right after that, if you were to deploy this application, which I can start right here, So it starts the deployment right there into the cloud. And while it is doing this, I'm gonna, uh, I'd like to show you how the actual billing part will work, because that one is not free, but it is actually priced very, very reasonably. So I want you to uh, be familiar with what that entails. 
So here uh, is our website. We can go into our cloud. So the way uh, cloud billing works is first of all you can check out the pricing. So for Google App Engine, it, it costs five cents an hour, and uh, we charge five cents for a complete hour. So if you were to deploy Web Orb into Google App Engine as a part of your app, and it ran for only 30 minutes or anything that's less than an hour, it is actually free. So you can start developing and playing with it at no cost. Once it is running in production, then this is when the charges do accumulate. And the way the way this uh, works uh, is there is a sign up page, so you can sign up for Google uh, uh, App Engine where we're running in there, and you provide your information, put your uh, credit card, and uh, you are assigned a subscriber ID. And subscriber ID is a unique number that identifies you as the customer. Uh, whenever you deploy WebWorp into Google App Engine, then you where you need the subscriber ID and the email address that you have specified right here into a configuration file, and then that's how WebWorp running in Google App Engine will identify you as the customer, and then send requests periodically to our billing server, which will take care of all the charges. And then at the end of the month, you you get one uh, monthly statement that says this is how much you were you were charged. Okay. All right, so that's that's how the pricing works, and the billing manager is actually right here. You can see all the pending charges and the past charges as well. Now, uh, I'm going to go back to Eclipse, and I see the deployment now have successfully completed. And uh, uh, let me get the so my my application was deployed right here. So in fact, the the default page is going to be whatever the you know, there's GWT application, but there's also management console in there, Web Warp Management Console. So right here, if I go to this URL, and Web Warp is going to be loaded up, and we can see everything that is deployed in this particular application right in the cloud. Okay, and to remind you, I do have a custom class that I put into this com TMC server. So here's uh, my test service. Very, very trivial class takes two parameters. There's one method that which takes two parameters, agent name. It does create an object and returns this object out of the method invocation. So here's my person class. And uh, uh, now that the console is open, I can go into the services tab, and I can see all the deployed classes. And this is running in Google App Engine right now. So here's my test service, and here's the test person, and uh, I can invoke this method right here just by typing in the arguments, click invoke, and I do get the result back. All the all the other features like code generation and everything else are available to you as well. So you can generate, let's say, all the action script code or really any other back, any other front end that we support, the code can be generated for that as well. So security, so pretty much everything is applicable. Right now in version 4.1, more than likely the RTMP support is not going to be included, but that's uh, it is definitely our goal, so we'll be including RTMP support for Google App Engine as well, perhaps in version 4.2, or or might it might be later than that. Okay, so that's Google App Engine, uh, and uh, if if there are any questions, uh, please uh, uh, send them out here, and I'll be I'll be happy to answer.